in. If you would take your Bibles and turn to a very familiar passage of Scripture, Psalm 23. We want to look at the 23rd Psalm. It's one of the most familiar passages of Scripture, one of the most favorite, most often uh, read. And yet as we come to it and look at it, I, I, sometimes I think you can never exhaust the truth that is found in it related to Jesus Christ as our shepherd and how that relationship of a shepherd to sheep carries over into our understanding of what Jesus Christ does for us as we follow him as our great shepherd. And it's interesting that in the Psalms, Psalm 22, 23, and 24 are linked together by the theme of the shepherd. And it's presenting uh, Jesus Christ in the future as the uh, shepherd of, of his sheep. And so chapter 22 of Psalms is talking about Jesus Christ as the good shepherd who dies for his sheep. And then when you come to the New Testament, John chapter 10, verse 11 states, Jesus is saying, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. And so Psalm 22 uh, is about the shepherd who dies for his sheep. Psalm 23 is about the shepherd being the great shepherd. And the point here is that the shepherd lives for his sheep. The shepherd is serving leading, directing, guiding, meeting the needs of his sheep. And so when we come to Psalm 23 tonight, we're looking at that fact that Jesus Christ is meeting all of our needs. Uh, in fact, every verb in that psalm is in the present tense, meaning that this is what he's constantly doing for us. And when you look at a passage like Hebrews chapter 13, in the New Testament, verses 20 and 21, uh, listen to what the New Testament writer says about Jesus Christ as our great shepherd, and, and look at how he's equating, here's our great shepherd Jesus, here's what God is doing for us through Jesus as our great shepherd. Hebrews 13, 20, and 21. It says, Now may the God of peace who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead, and then he says, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, and then notice the prayer request and how he relates the work of the great shepherd with us. He says, make you complete in every good work to do his will, working in you what is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. So as we look at Psalm 23, we see Jesus as the great shepherd who's doing these things for his people, for his sheep. And then Psalm 24, he's presented as the chief shepherd. And the idea here is that the chief shepherd is coming back uh, for his people. And in 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 4, uh, Jesus as the chief shepherd is mentioned in that exact way. It says, when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. So Psalm 24, he's coming back to the people of Israel to set up his kingdom uh, as the chief shepherd for the church. He's going to be coming back for his people in that regard. But you see these three pictures of Jesus uh, as the shepherd. And so we, when we look at Psalm 23, we want to be thinking, here's what Jesus, our shepherd, is doing for us. Here's the truth that God wants you to know about what Jesus Christ is doing for you and why you should be trusting in him as your shepherd. You know, it's interesting, you, you can ask the question, why did God give us this illustration of Jesus being the shepherd and we are the sheep? And if you study sheep, if you have sheep or know of them, what do you quickly discover about sheep? Sheep are some of the dumbest animals, some of the most needy animals that exist. They are very fearful. They need what? They need a shepherd. And so we don't want to be offended 
But that's the reality. God wants you to say, here's Jesus, the shepherd, and you as his sheep, we need him. And that's the emphasis that's, that's brought out through this animal, the sheep. Left to yourself, you're in big trouble. But with Jesus as your shepherd, you're in good shape. And Psalm 23 uh, clearly points that out and what he does for us and why we should keep trusting in him. So looking at Psalm 23, let's highlight what Jesus Christ as our great shepherd does for us. Verse 1, the first part says, The Lord is my shepherd. The first thing that we need to realize here is that we need to be submitting to Jesus as our shepherd. As David writes this psalm, his statement that says, The Lord is my shepherd, is a declaration that he has submitted himself to following Jesus just as sheep submit themselves to following their shepherd. And that's a positive thing. That's a good thing. And we need to see ourselves in that way as well, that we need to continually be submitting to Jesus Christ as our shepherd. Otherwise, we will be submitting to other things, other people, other ways of thinking, but we need to stick with Jesus because he's the one who meets all of our needs. Any other choices for a sheep, rather than following their shepherd, will lead to issues and problems, and the same thing is true for the followers of Christ. We must have that constant thinking that Jesus is the one that we submit to and follow day in, day out, uh, morning, noon, and night, because he's the shepherd, we're the sheep, and we badly need him. And actually, the rest of the psalm uh, is based upon that submission. If you're not submitting to the shepherd, if you're not following Jesus, then the rest of the psalm will not apply because you're off on your own and you're trying to do something apart from the shepherd. So submitting to Jesus, we need to be thinking continually, the Lord is my shepherd. I'm the sheep. He's the shepherd. I need to follow him. And then the second part of that verse, it says, I shall not want. And that statement is making it clear that we are content with what the shepherd gives us. We're content with what Jesus supplies for us, and we're not wanting to go and look for our needs and desires to be met anywhere else except with Jesus Christ. And again, as you you think of this, this idea, contentment is throughout the Bible, and you think of the New Testament passages, Apostle Paul, Philippians 4, what did he say? Whether I'm in a good position or whether I'm in a bad position, things are going well or I'm being persecuted, whether I have stuff more than I need or I'm lacking, he says, whatever state I'm in, I've learned what? to be content. How could he do that? The only way he can, or the only way we can, is because we are looking to Jesus as our shepherd, and we are very happy to say, I shall not want, because he's my shepherd. No matter what comes, I have my shepherd, and he's going to meet all of my needs. Uh, Paul, writing to Timothy, 1 Timothy 6.6, 6, he said, godliness with contentment is great gain. There's nothing that can meet or match what Jesus Christ does for us. Therefore, we should be content, not looking outside of what the shepherd provides, but being satisfied with him. You know, I came across the story of a pastor who was a special speaker somewhere, and he was speaking to a mixed audience, young, old, men, women, children, adults, and he asked the question as he was going to begin to look at this passage of Scripture, and he says, how many people can quote Psalm 23? He said, no, a number of hands went up, and there was a little girl who raised her hand. And so he thought, you know, can you really quote this? And she said, oh, yes, yes. Is it okay if she comes up and quotes it for us? The parents said, yeah, go ahead. So she came up, she stood there, 
And she starts, and she says, the Lord is my shepherd, that's all I want. And then she went and sat down. <laughs> but when you stop and think of what she said, she nailed it, unknowingly, but that's exactly what this is stating. The Lord is my shepherd, I don't need anything else, that's all I want. And this is what David is declaring as he thinks about what? The relationship that he has with Christ the relationship that Christ has with him. And that's the way we need to be thinking all the time. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I'm submitting to him. I'm content with what he does in my life. I trust in him. And then verse 2, he, we see that we are secure with Jesus as our shepherd. It says, He maketh me to lie down in green pastures, he leadeth me beside the still waters. When you look at this and then you understand how sheep respond to their environment, if a sheep is laying down in green pastures, that means that they are not afraid, that they are uh, secure in whatever is going on around them because they know the shepherd's there, the shepherd's in control, the shepherd's protecting them, so they have peace so that they can lay down. The second part of that verse, you know, he leads me beside the still water. There's a reason why David wrote the still water. Here's David who was a shepherd. He knew what that was all about. And he knew that if you take sheep to moving water, they are scared by it. They are afraid. They will not drink from it. Uh, they will go without water and die before they'll drink from a moving brook. And so the shepherd has to find still water. And the picture here, again, is if that sheep is lying down, if it's being led to still waters, the picture is a picture of security that leads to peace. They are secure in the shepherd leading them. They're secure in what the shepherd is doing for them. Therefore, they have peace. And when you think of peace in the Bible, what kind of peace has our shepherd provided for us? Well, you have two types. The Bible speaks about peace with God and the peace of God. And through Jesus Christ, we have peace with God. Because of Christ's work, the shepherd's work on our behalf, we have been made right with God. We're justified with God. Therefore, we have peace with God. There's security there. I don't have to worry about the condemnation of God because of my shepherd, and therefore I have peace. But there's also the peace of God that passes all understanding because Jesus Christ is our great shepherd. We don't have to fear what's going on in the world around us. We don't have to fear circumstances. We don't have to fear enemies. We don't have to fear where our needs are going to be met the next day because Jesus Christ is our shepherd. And we trust him, therefore we have the security that leads to peace, peace with God and the peace of God. And so again, the importance of, I want to make sure that I'm seeing Jesus Christ as the one who meets all of my needs and I'm secure in him. And then verse 3 we see following Jesus as my shepherd is brought out. He says, he restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. What you have here is the picture of the relationship of the shepherd to the sheep. And it's showing that when a sheep would wander off, the shepherd would go out and bring them back. He'd restore them. If a particular sheep kept doing that, uh, what would often occur, the shepherd, because of its love for that sheep, because he didn't want it to wander off and be uh, devoured by an enemy or have harm come upon it, he would often take his rod, break one of its legs. He would then fix it, mend it, and then that sheep would do what? Well, he'd hobble around for a while, but it would learn to do what? Don't wander off. He'd be restored to the flock, restored to staying with the shepherd. Same idea for us. When we wander off, when we sin, 
What's the shepherd want us to do? Well, come back. Come back and confess. Make it right. Come back and walk with our shepherd in fellowship with him. But guess what? If we don't listen, we don't go away, then guess what? He might break a leg. It doesn't mean he doesn't love us, doesn't care for us, doesn't meet the needs of that situation. But because he does care for us, he brings about that discipline, that chastisement that we need. And that's the picture here. David is saying, my shepherd restores my soul. He brings me back to what's important. He brings me back to following him if needed. At the same time, he leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And here's the picture of the shepherd leading the sheep where they needed to go. If they needed pasture, if they needed security, if they needed water, they would follow the shepherd and he would take them in those paths. In the believer's life, those who follow Jesus, those who have been born again by the grace of God, God is producing through Jesus Christ, our great shepherd, righteousness in our lives. That's a work of God. That's a work of salvation. And that's, again, a picture that God wants us to have in our minds. That as God has saved us, as we yield and submit to, to the Holy Spirit, the Word of God, to following our shepherd, what happens? Well, God produces righteousness. And so when we look at Jesus again as our great shepherd, we need to be trusting in him. He's going to lead me as I follow his voice, as I follow his word, in the paths that he would have me to go. If I don't, if I stray, he's going to bring me back, no matter what it takes, and he's going to be producing that righteousness in our lives. So we are following Jesus as our shepherd, and he's restoring our soul, and he's creating the righteousness in our lives to the glory of God. And also, when you stop and think about it, where is the sheep most satisfied? Following the shepherd where all their needs are being met? Or wandering off trying to find something else that doesn't meet their needs? Well, it's following the shepherd in those paths of righteousness. And so trusting in the shepherd again uh, is very important to keep that aspect in mind. And then verse 4 talks about confidence with Jesus as our shepherd. He says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will feel, feel, fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Here you have this idea, this picture, that as we follow the shepherd, the enemies of the sheep cannot touch us. And this is the picture for the believer. As I am one of his sheep, as I follow him, evil can't touch me, Satan can't touch me, death can't touch me. There is nothing that can take us away from our shepherd, and he will protect us every step of the way. And as a result, we have confidence, we have courage, that we can serve Christ, that we have nothing in this world that causes us to be anxious or worried. And sheep are very anxious. The littlest thing can set them off and cause them to go into a panic. And I remember seeing that one time at a friend's farm, and he had a, they had maybe 40 sheep that they kept, and they were all in one room. And in the middle of the room was the place where they were fed, and this is his sheep, his dad's. And he says, you want to see something? I said, no, okay. Well, he makes a noise. And those sheep just started whipping around that center of that feeding trough, round and round. And he says, tackle them, tackle them. <laughs> like, no, I'm good. <laughs> but they, I, I was shocked at how easily they were frightened and how quickly they all just joined in. As soon as one got frightened, they went round and round. And we, you look at... What did they need? Well, they didn't need a shepherd frightening them. <laughs> they needed a shepherd who could keep them calm, keep them, their needs met. And then they would have the confidence to go about their, their business. Same idea here for us. We have Jesus as our shepherd, nothing to fear. Or I read as, uh, an account of uh, a family had two dogs. One was a big protective type dog, and then they had that little chihuahua type. 
know, those little yippy things. And these two were buddy-buddy in the home, and so in their backyard, if there was any buddy coming or any other animals, the two of them would stand and bark and uh, chase off whatever was there or challenge what was ever there, and that little dog would stand by the big dog and just give it the business, you know, whoever was coming. Well, one day there was a, another dog coming in, into the yard, and the owners called the dogs in. Well, the big dog heard, but the little dog didn't hear. So the big dog went into the house, and that little dog still was standing there yipping and yapping, try, you know, look, I'm going to scare off this dog. And then he looked around and saw he was by himself. And he said that, that dog tore for the door and was tail between its leg, whining. <laughs> you know, the courage was gone because the big dog was gone. And that, again, paints a picture for us. Who are we standing with? Jesus. Who never leaves us? Jesus. And as long as we're staying by his side, we have confidence, we have courage, and we have nothing to fear. And that's what the point of verse 4 is, that no matter what I'm facing, even if I'm facing death, there's nothing to fear because Jesus is my great shepherd. If I'm facing evil, if I'm facing enemies, anything, there's nothing to fear because Jesus is my shepherd. And then verses 5 and 6, we're blessed with Jesus as our shepherd. And as the psalmist David finishes his up, he's contemplating, look at everything that we have because of Jesus being our shepherd. And he begins verse 5, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Uh, as, you, as you think of that, if you, if you have guests coming over to your house for dinner, well, what do you do? You know, if they walk in the door and you, you say, ah, make yourself at home, you get hungry, go help yourself, uh, maybe there's something out there, we'd say, no, you don't do that. If you have guests invited to your home for dinner, you prepare the table, you get it ready, you put out food to meet their needs, and you want to have the fellowship and the joy and all that comes. Well, here's the thought. God, Jesus, the great shepherd, prepares a table for us in the presence of our enemies. So what's the picture? Well, he's putting out what we need. He's putting out what will bless us. He's putting out things that we can't even begin to imagine because he loves his sheep. He died for his sheep. And when you think of the spiritual blessings, you can go on and on. That's part of the preparation. He's my protector. He's provided salvation, justification. And you can go on and on with everything that is on that table that the shepherd has given to his sheep. And even if the enemies are present, they can't take it away. They're not going to take things off of that table. That's what God has given to his sheep, to his people. He goes on, he says, you anoint my head with oil. The idea of oil in the Bible is power. Through Jesus Christ, you have the power, the enablement to do whatever you have been commanded to do by your shepherd. And that power is limitless. Uh, it, there's nothing that you can lack in that area of, well, I can't do this what the Bible says. Well, yes, you can, because Jesus is your shepherd. He's given you the enablement, the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Word of God to work in your life, and he anoints your head with oil. And he says, my cup runneth over. What's the statement here? Wow, as I look at what is on the table, if I look, as I look at what God empowers me to do by his grace, he says, I just have to proclaim, I have more than I could ever ask for or imagine. And the cup running over is that exceedingly and abundantly what God does for his people. And that is, again, what we need to be remembering and picturing and trusting in. My shepherd provides everything that I need, including the grace, the power to live for him. Verse 6, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Every single day following Jesus, the goodness and the mercy of God is there. The mercies of the Lord are new every morning. Why? Because Jesus is our shepherd. 
It's Jesus who is pouring out his goodness, his mercy, his grace, his love upon us, and it's never-ending. And that thought, God intends for that to be in your mind. God intends for you to keep that in your heart, that the shepherd's there, and that he's doing these things for you because he cares for you and he loves you. And if you're thinking that way, what does it push out of our minds and our hearts? Well, I'm not sitting there complaining, because what? Wow, look at what I have in Christ. Look what I have because of Jesus being my shepherd. There is no room for complaining. There's no room for being discouraged and giving up because Jesus is my shepherd. And these things are going to follow me all the days of my life. And then he concludes, And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now there's the hope, eternal life. I'm following Jesus. I'm believing in him. And where is he taking me? Taking me through this life, meeting all my needs, above and beyond what I could ask or think. And in the end, I end up in heaven with my shepherd for eternity. Uh, how do you top that? You can't. And that's why we want to keep trusting Jesus every day of our lives, because we have him as our great shepherd. And even as you think about you know, going to prayer, prayer requests, I think it's interesting to stop and think, here's my great shepherd, Christ. Do you think he wants us to come and give our cares and needs to him? He definitely does. Why? So he can meet those needs to bring glory and honor to him as the one that we've just considered, the one who has promised to meet all of our needs, the one who has promised to lead us in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He has commanded and he has desired that we come and we bring our cares, our burdens, our needs, and we cast them to him. We don't hang on to them. We don't hand them to someone else to try to meet that need. But we give it to our shepherd, our great shepherd, who will meet all of our needs as he has promised to do. So I trust as you consider this very familiar psalm once again, Psalm 23, uh, probably many of you have memorized it or very familiar with it, but again, look at it from a personal perspective. Jesus is my shepherd. You can't beat that. And I want to say with the psalmist these very things, that because of that reality, these things are true. Lord, help me to live accordingly believing these things, and that will impact uh, the choices you make, the things that you think upon, where you look for help. Uh, it needs to be in Jesus Christ. All right, so trust this will encourage you this evening, and you know I think it's always interesting to go to passages that are very familiar. Um, you never go wrong. <laughs> uh, you can come back to this time and time again. In fact, as I studied this, uh, you just think, I can't even do it justice. <laughs> you, know, you just can't. But that's because of God. That's because of who Christ is. So you keep coming back to it. Let God keep showing you more about your great shepherd.